fetuses. Some of them are not dead. They need to be dead. I'm going to give you one last warning. Those fetuses need to be dead. I was just like shocked, sickened. I still can't get over that. It's like a nightmare that never goes away, knowing that that occurs around this country. Well, anyway, now people are responding to this video, but they wouldn't respond to what I told them about that issue. GMO labeling group head host a fundraiser for pro-Monsanto Hillary Clinton. Former CEO of Stonyfield Farms. You know the yogurt? They make yogurt. Public supporter of GMO labeling just hosted $2,700 per person fundraiser for Hillary. Oh, which side are you on? We'll be back after this three-minute break with the Power Hour. Stay tuned. This is Joyce Riley. So my elementary school age child is begging me for a cell phone. Please, Mom, please. All the kids have them. But I've seen the research, and it makes sense to me that any mobile device that operates using electromagnetic frequencies that close to me or my child's head needs to be blocked. Harmful wireless radiation is real. Protect yourself and your loved ones with Block It Pocket. Call 888-315-9618. Free shipping to the lower 48. BlockItPocket.com. Enhancing health and privacy. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. This is Joyce Riley from the Power Hour, and I want to introduce you to Numana Storable Foods. This is the first brand of storable foods that I am willing to put my name behind. It's food you can trust. No GMOs, no MSG, no chemical preservatives, and no fake meat. Plus, Numana doesn't just make that claim. They back it up with independent evaluation and testing. Another thing that Numana really does that excites me is the delicious vegetarian options. If your standards are as high as mine, I can confidently tell you that Numana Storable Foods are the quality choice that you've been waiting for. Numana won't just meet your expectations, they will exceed them. And that's why we're thrilled to have the good guys from Numana joining the Power Hour family. Go to PowerPrepper.com and learn about Numana Storable Foods. You can also call 877-817-9829. That's 877-817-9829. Numana the storable food you'll love to eat. Is negative content or comments on the web affecting your personal or professional reputation? Unfavorable comments, embarrassing pictures, videos, legal documents, and bad tweets can ruin your personal life, your career, or your business. It happens a lot, and it's just not fair. But what can you do? Reputation.com can protect your good name. Get a free consultation now at 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Call right now for a free expert reputation analysis. It's easy to squash the unfair attacks with our patented system, and the analysis is absolutely free. Make the best things about you jump out in searches. Protect your personal and professional reputation, your business, and your income. Get your free reputation analysis from reputation.com right now. Call 800-831-0771. 800-831-0771. Thank you for joining us on the Power Hour today. California is going to get relief from the drought. That's right, El Nino to the rescue. I guess El Nino is going to do some good now. But hopefully they will be out of the drought. I don't know. It's just horrible what has happened in California. And I really am concerned about the fruits and vegetables this year. The prices obviously are going to go up. Speaking of prices going up, eggs just took another hike. I, let's see. I got organic eggs the other day, and they were $4, I think, and 36 cents for a dozen eggs. Santa Cruz County in California votes to cease doing business with five too-big-to-fail mega banks. It appears that Ryan uh, Connerty 
The supervisor of the 3rd District of Santa Cruz County wrote a letter back in June to the rest of the Board of Supervisors in which he bravely pleaded the counties to cease business operations with five of the TBTF, or the Too Big to Fail, Wall Street mega banks. And why? Because they're criminal felons. Considering Eric Holder refused to punish them, someone has to take a stand. There seems to be no limit to the greed in some of our nation's largest banks. I believe it is critical that the county only work with the most trustworthy institutions as we invest and protect the public's tax dollars. Santa Cruz County should not be involved with those who rigged the world's financial markets. Yay! Man, somebody's got some guts out there. Don't you like it? Wow. Seven reasons the well-rested prepper will prevail. There's a lot of good reasons. But it's in the email blast. Just do one little bit a week and get yourself ready for whatever is coming. And if you look at Greece, you're going to see that we're not far behind them. We've got a challenge, believe me, a financial challenge that is coming. The only way is for the system to fail. There are 33 probiotic foods that are really good for your digestive tract. 33. Well, the top 33, let's say. And I would encourage you to consider eating some of these foods, whole foods, which I believe in so very much. And I believe the Power Hour has the absolute best absolute best. Those are the ones I choose. Those are the ones I use. And you hear all kinds of commercials on Genesis on our show for other people's products. And you know, they want to get on our show because they know our people are smart. But don't trust it unless you know what is in it, where it's made, and that it's tested. Because so many of these items come from China. Now, we have been in the past had to deal with a few things that the only place that we could get them was China. Now, that was in the past. And now, we are pretty much demanding that nothing come from China. One at a time, we're getting rid of anything that came from China. And I will tell you, a lot of these prepackaged green foods that other people sell come from China. Ours, not one ingredient comes from China. And that's the Gary Null Foods. And, by the way, they will be out to you probably around the first week in July. And I am so sorry. I mean, first week in August. I'm just so sorry that we've had this delay. They have had to reformulate everything. And to keep it in the United States, it's very difficult to get the items because they don't grow enough of it here. So to get the absolute best, which Gary Null will not... Um, he will not accept anything less than the best. It takes some time, unfortunately. Anyway, the uh, uh, prebiotics, are they better than probiotics? And what about fermented foods? We'll come back after this one-minute, ten-second break. Stay tuned to the Power Hour. This is Joyce Riley. What have I learned so far? I've learned that there is no one path right for everyone. I've learned that without my high school diploma, I can only do so much. My options were limited. I found a free personalized learning program with Learn for Life that has a flexible schedule so I could keep my job while earning my high school diploma. I found new career training opportunities that would jumpstart my future. What have I learned so far? I've learned that I can change my life. Are you 14 to 19 years old and looking for a free high school diploma program with flexible meeting times? This program allows you to keep your job or important family responsibilities while earning your high school diploma. If you've fallen behind on credits or dropped out of school completely, get back on track with free tutoring, a caring faculty, and one-on-one -on -one attention. For more information on how to reach your graduation goal, visit learnforlife.org. That's L-E-A-R-N, the number four, L-I-F-E dot O-R-G. Or in Roll today by calling 877-360-LEARN. That's This is KCAA Loma Linda, the station that leaves no listener behind. 
CNBC News is next, a courtesy of BuySellMakeOffer.com, where you can post a video about items you have for sale. Sign up now. It's free. Chuck Kamlick, CNBC Radio. Wall Street could be heading off on a new winning streak today. Stocks are expected to rise after Greece agreed to new bailout terms, higher taxes, less spending. Citigroup reported its highest quarterly profit in eight years. More customers put money in the bank and took out loans while Citi's legal costs fell. Goldman Sachs profits cut in half by higher legal bills and weaker bond trading. eBay's profits plunged, but revenue was higher thanks to its PayPal business, which signed up even more customers. PayPal becomes its own company tomorrow, and eBay just minutes ago sold its enterprise business for $925 million. That business helps eBay customers beef up their online presence. Foreclosures down 13% in the first quarter to their lowest level in 10 years now. And Consumer Reports will stop uh, recommending laundry pods to its readers. Too many kids continue to be poisoned accidentally. In fact, Consumer Reports is now telling people with kids to avoid those pods altogether. I'm Chuck Kamlick, CNBC Radio. A promise was made. A promise that hit the beaches of Normandy. A vow that captured Iwo Jima. A contract that weathered Tet. A pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq. An IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earned. For help, visit DAV.org. I had Belvita breakfast biscuits this morning. Then what did I do? Made my bed, fed my fish, got dressed, cleaned the dish. Remembered to floss, but still didn't do it. Ran a lap on the track, dropped my phone, didn't crack. Got in before the boss, made sure that he knew it. Oh, hey, you just getting here? Crunchy Belvita breakfast biscuits are made with delicious ingredients and carefully baked to release steady energy all morning long. Share your morning win. Belvita. Morning win. KCAA is your CNBC news affiliate. We're the station that gets down to business. Good morning. It's 6.02. I'm Bill Schwartz with your traffic and weather. Looks like temps in the 80s and 90s across SoCal today. L.A. and Orange County, they're going to see morning fog and temps in the low 80s. I.E. going to be in the low 90s. Beaches with the morning clouds and uh, they'll be in the low 70s. High desert in the upper 90s. Mounds will be sunny with temps in the mid 70s. Right now, savor the cool while we got it. Uh, 65 degrees at KCAA. Checking out your drive in Chino. It's stop and go traffic on the 60. That's westbound between Mountain Avenue and the 57 Orange Freeway. In Corona, stop and go traffic at the 91 westbound between McKinley 91 and the uh, Green River Road. And in Lake Elsinore, more stop and go traffic. I-15 northbound between Indian Truck and Halco Road. That's traffic and weather from the station that leaves no listener behind. KCAA AM 1050. Friday night, July 24th at Ween's Family Cellars Winery in Temecula. A concert under the stars featuring Berlin. Berlin with lead singer Terry Nunn and their huge hits, Sex and Riding on the Metro. Riding on the Metro. Opening the show, Temecula's very own The 4019s. The entire show is hosted by me, the poor man. Berlin, the 4019s, and dinner Friday night, July 24th at Ween's Family Cellars Winery in Temecula. Get your tickets now. Go to goldencrownproductions.com. Call 951-658-2411 for more information. Concert in support of Hospice of the Valley. So we'll see you Friday night, July 24th. Ween's Family Cellars Winery in Temecula, Berlin, 4019s, hosted by me, the poor man. See you there. In Agnet West today, the Senate version of next year's fiscal appropriations bill for the USDA and FDA has cleared its first hurdle. Gary Crawford has the story after this. You put more into your crops than most people realize. Time, effort, heart, and the not-so-proverbial blood, sweat, and tears. Farming's not just a career. It is your passion. At Compass Minerals, your passion is our commitment. We're proud to offer you Potassium Plus Premium Sulfate of Potash, a high potassium fertilizer with sulfate sulfur and virtually no chloride. It's the potassium source that brings more to the table, so you can too. Call your local distributor or visit potassiumplus.com. Healthy soil can help protect your farm from drought. 
improve production, and protect soil and water resources. Plus, healthy soil can lower input costs, and that can lead to a healthier bottom line for your business. Contact your local Natural Resources Conservation Service office today. A goal of mine has been to report a bill that will be acceptable in a bipartisan way. Kansas Senator Jerry Moran presiding over the Senate Agricultural Appropriations Subcommittee, which on Tuesday approved its version of the fiscal year 2016 spending bill for the Agriculture Department and Food and Drug Administration. The bill is $65 million less than this current year, but Moran said... The investments made in this bill reaffirm our commitment to being at the forefront of production agriculture and to provide our rural communities the ability to compete both here and abroad. The bill adds money for ag research, assures enough for farm loan programs, rejects proposed cuts to technical conservation assistance for farmers, but as in every appropriation bill, there are some policy strings attached. For example, the bill prevents the Farm Service Agency from closing county offices. Also, it limits the government's upcoming dietary guidelines to strictly nutritional information. The bill will be taken up Thursday by the full Senate Appropriations Committee, chaired by Mississippi Senator Thad Cochran, who said, I'm confident the committee will pass that on with uh, its blessings to the full Senate. In Washington, Gary Crawford. I'm Sabrina Hill for AgnetWest.com. As the markets continue higher and experts continue to call for a correction, how should you invest? Do you buy now, hoping for higher highs, or wait for a pullback and hope it's not the beginning of a major correction? Do you sell now before the markets correct or hold on for even bigger gains? Hello, I'm Mo Ansari, host of Market Wrap and president of Compaq Asset Management. At Compaq, we believe proactive management is the key to successful investing. We start by developing an investment portfolio that fits your needs and risk tolerance. Then we continue to analyze the markets and your portfolio, making adjustments as market conditions and your lifestyle change. If you're fearful about your investments or unsure which way to turn, call me, Mo Ansari, at 1-800-388-9700 and let's work together to get the most out of these markets, no matter where they're headed. Call 1-800-388-9700, 1-800-388-9700. Compact Asset Management is a registered investment advisor, funds custodian, Fidelity Institutional Wealth Services member, FINRA SIPC. Leading with over 1 million searches, Subway has suspended longtime spokesman Jared Fogle after police raided his home this week as a part of a child pornography investigation involving the former head of Fogle's nonprofit foundation. Many people are now wondering on social media, will Subway eventually sever their ties with Jared? If so, they have some big pants to fill. Also trending with over 500,000 searches, Disney's Hollywood Studios has removed their bronze Bill Cosby statue after newly released court documents revealed that Cosby admitted to getting drugs to give to a woman with whom he wanted to have relations with. People who signed the petition to get rid of the statue said it was the right thing to do. Cosby has not commented on the documents and has denied sexual assault allegations. And pop singer Ariana Grande has one more problem. California police are now investigating a video that appears to show Grande licking donuts that were on display in a donut shop and later yelling, I hate America. America. Grande has recently apologized for her remarks. This had over 500,000 searches. I'm Successful Brim with West Trending This Week on KPAA 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. Good morning, good morning. It's Thursday. I'm Aaron Brinker. I'm Tobin Brinker. We are on the brink, the morning show on KCAA AM ten fifty. We got Bill DeSchwartz in the booth. Good morning, morning Bill. Morning, morning. How are you this morning? I'm glad you asked before I dump half another C note in my gas tank. Cause <laughs> cause then I'll be in deep mourning. Yeah, seriously, what's up with that? We filled up Tobin's truck yesterday. Yeah. Holy <sighs> smokes. <sighs> Well, and it's gotten so high that if you, you know, these gas stations put a limit on how much you can pull out of a debit card. And so, you know, he, his d- tank, it costs more to fill up his tank than we can, we are allowed to spend on our debit card. Well, they used to get some sort of sticker shock on their face if I whipped out a hundred dollar bill. Now they don't even blink. No. Yeah. <laughs> They're like only one. What? Come on, dude. I know. You can't afford a full tank? What, do you have a Prius or something? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I, You know, I have to say, I, I, I love my Prius. I have an 08 Prius, and it's got a lot of miles on it, and God willing, it'll run forever because I love that car. Amen. It, and then we have a gas-guzzling truck, so it kind of balances out. But, you know, sometimes you got to help people move stuff. you got to go to the dump. You know, trucks yeah, come in handy. trucks are very handy. Trucks are very uh, handy. Yes, especially when uh, people think they can take a Prius up into uh, places where you need an off-road vehicle. Yeah, that's not going to work. All of a sudden, uh, Prius can't quite do that. No, 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 no. It's really not for that purpose. 
so yeah, I we have friends who used to live in the mountains and and they they had a Prius and it just was not a practical vehicle, and uh, they bought a second. They had a, a another four wheel drive vehicle. They bought yeah. a second four wheel drive vehicle because they realized they needed it. Well, speaking of vehicles, a big day for our son today. Yeah, he's taking his driver's test. So we need we need uh, positive vibes, prayers uh, mm-hmm. for, for our son today. And, uh, uh, w- that would be the California driver's test. Right? That's right. Boy, and I failed mine in high school. I did not uh, stop for uh, an unsigned intersection. Whoops. I just, wow. I did not slow down. I just blew right through it, and yeah, you failed. Well, well, that'll do it. He he just graduated from college. He's a little of a late, bl- little bit of a late bloomer on getting his driver's license. But you know, we're we're excited for him. Yeah. And if he passes, I'll put out the you know the warnings tomorrow, so everyone will know to you know. Stay off the roads and sidewalks. <laughs> so we had a great time last night. We went to Cal State San Bernardino's uh, concert, free concert. Um, they have a free concert series. Last night uh, it was nights. Desperado, uh, which is a band, a, a, a tribute band, an Eagles tribute band. It was really nice. The weather was nice. It got a little cool last night, which was perfect. Um, lots of people out there on the lawn. They had um, uh, tacos and uh, like a, you, a vendor selling tacos and nachos and that sort of thing. Somebody else selling kettle corn. Um, it was it was beautiful. Weather was perfect and the music was fabulous. So next week on Wednesday, starting at 7 p.m. at CSUSB, um, is a, a tribute band for Fleetwood Mac. I think. Yes. Fleetwood Mac. And so um, we're going to be. I don't know if Tobin's going to be out, but I'm 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 definitely going to go. I think it's going to. Yeah. So- I think it sounds like fun. Yeah, should be a fun, should be a fun event. Last night was great, and I just love that Cal State does this. And so many people come from not just San Marino, from the broader community. I mean, I saw folks from Colton and Rialto and yep. from all over. People had well-behaved dogs, and um, uh, and their children. There were lots of children there, families. Yep. You know, bringing the lawn chairs out. No alcohol on the campus. So, I mean, you know, except in the pub. But there's no alcohol allowed on the lawn. But nobody, you know, everybody was having fun. Lots yeah. of people were up dancing. It was a lot. Of, it was a good time. It was it, a good time. It was a good time. Well, a lot of good stories today, Aaron. Uh, yes, yes. Well, one of them, I, I know that you want to take the lead on this one. Uh, bankruptcy. The bankruptcy judge in San Bernardino um, made a ruling yesterday. Yeah, you know, um, one of the big ideas that San Bernardino put in their plan was the idea of outsourcing the fire department. And, of course, the fire department in San Bernardino does what they always do. They sued. They said, you can't do that. The, the city charter won't allow you. Well, yesterday, uh, Judge Jury ruled that, in fact, the, the charter does allow it. So let me, let me give you some from the, This is from the Sun newspaper. Uh, Ryan Hagen's uh, been following this very closely. Um, Nothing in the city charter prevents San Bernardino from outsourcing its fire department, a federal bankruptcy judge ruled Wednesday in a blow to the fire union that its attorneys immediately said they would appeal. The ruling clears the way for the, city to, for the city's plan to replace city firefighters, plans that have been in underway for months with the San Diego County Fire Department and a private firm, Sentara, submitting bids to provide fire services, and which the city counted on to save $7 million to $10 million a year in its bankruptcy exit plan that was filed in May. In its limited ruling, because U.S. bankruptcy judge Meredith Jury said attorneys may be able to convince her later that state law requires the city to go through a formal meet and confer process with union officials before outsourcing, but it clearly and unsurprisingly went against the union, said fire union attorney Corey Glaive. This is not unexpected, Glaive told the judge after she gave a tentative ruling and invited him to argue against it. This has been an anti-labor case from the beginning, and it continues as such. Jury responded, I don't buy that, but go ahead. There are several parts of the city charter that the fire union alleges requires the city to have a fire department composed of city employees. The union was backed up by a city's attorney city attorney's opinion from 1991 when Jim Penman was in office advising that the charter did not permit outsourcing of the police or fire departments. That was countered by an opinion of current city attorney Gary Sines wrote after the outsourcing mood had already begun asserting the opposite. Sines' extremely recent opinion shouldn't be a factor, jury said, and even Penman's opinion written before the current controversy was more like a lawyer's advice to a client than a neutral finding such as an attorney general's opinion, she also said. Quite frankly, almost none, she said, of the influence the city attorney opinions had on her decision. I know that case law says I'm to give them, city attorney opinions, weight until they're clearly, unless they're clearly erroneous. I guess I think it's a flawed analysis of the law 
to say that the charter prohibits outsourcing. And if that makes it clearly erroneous, and that's the word I'm supposed to say, then I find it clearly erroneous, I, which I love that she put it like that. I, I, I agree. Um, my opinion, and this is just my personal opinion, having been a city councilman and, and worked with uh, City Attorney Penman, was that he often wrote opinions that were uh, essentially uh, love letters to the folks that were funding his campaigns. And I viewed this one as, as a payback to the, the fire union to give them some sense of mind that, that, that they couldn't be outsourced while he was city attorney. Thus, they would keep putting money into his campaigns. Well, you, you look at the till. There's no money in the drawer. What part of broke does the union not quite get? They yeah. don't care. Yeah. Oh, that's a revelation. So among the charter provisions that the union said imply there must be an in-house fire department are requirements that there be a fire chief and as, and as many other employees as the city finds appropriate and out, and outlining how the city officials supervise the par- fire department. Jury said there's no such thing as an implied restriction in a city charter. Unless something specifically is speci- specifically prohibited by the charter, the city may do it. There's also a much-discussed requirement reaffirmed by voters in 2014 that the police and firefighters be paid the average of what 10 like-sized cities pay, something Glaive said the city was trying to circumvent by staffing its fire department with people who aren't city employees. There's nothing inconsistent about having a fire chief who supervises contract employees, according to the city's bankruptcy attorney, Paul Glassman, who noted that he and the rest of the city's bankruptcy team are an example of contract employees who work for someone within the city, uh, the city attorney who is elected. That's who they work for. Outside of the court, Glaive criticized the city for not specifying in its request for proposal that the outside agencies be asked to run the department uh, would be, in fact, subject to management by city employees. Um, And that does need to be clear. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yes, so um, it'll be interesting to see. You know, they're gonna they're going to sue because that's what they do. Yep. And I think that's part of the frustration with the city. You know, if you were to ask the city council people, I, I'm sure they would tell you, or many of them would tell you, they don't want to outsource fire. But if all they all the fire department does is say, you know, is is in, is stubborn or intractable, obstinate, and then they they don't get what they want and they sue and they, yeah. they don't like what they see. They sue. And again and again and again, there's not, they don't have any choice. The city council doesn't have any choice. Yeah. And, and, and again, my opinion, I was personally skeptical of the idea of outsourcing the fire department. I didn't feel that necessarily that was the right thing to do, but the history of this particular group and their lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit and their in- unwillingness to sit down with the city and deal with the reality of the, the fact that the till is empty, as you said, Bill, has made, has driven it to this point, and even now, uh, when the when ruling after ruling goes against them, instead of using that as an opportunity to say, "Oh, we made to we need to recalibrate, we need to come to the table to fix this," they still continue to push the envelope, which is just driving this thing to the ultimate conclusion, which is that fire will be outsourced. And the thing about it that strikes me is, do these union rank and file union members understand what their union is doing? Because if if they truly understood, would they be supporting their their rigid stand, their rigid line in the sand. I don't know that they would be. I don't know if I were in their position that I would be. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, I think I shared this when we first came on the air and we're talking about bankruptcies. But in Vallejo, California, after they exited their bankruptcy, their fire union president was quoted in the newspapers as saying how he wished they had taken a different tact, that after going through the whole thing, and seeing how devastated they were. And they fought it, just like ours, our guys are. Fought it every step of the way. And after they saw all the fire station closings and all the impacts, the negative impacts it had on their members, he wished that they had come to the table early on and sat down and worked out more reasonable compromises instead of fighting it and just allowing these horrible things to end up happening. And, you know, bankruptcy is never easy. You're gonna, it's going to be hard no matter which road you take. But I think that coming to the table was, was just a much more ethical a, a responsible way of dealing with these problems, and it's just shameful that the city has had to spend so much on lawyers uh, instead of on the city employees because they've got to fight these things instead of solving the problems. So it's time for a break. A boy named Sue and Sue and Sue. Exactly, exactly, exactly. It's six nineteen. I'm Aaron Brinker. I'm Tobin Brinker, and we have Bill the Schwartz in the booth. We are on the Brink, the morning show on KCAA AM ten fifty. We'll be right back. KCAA is your CNBC news affiliate. We're the station that gets down to business. 
Republican politicos say that taking unlimited sums of campaign cash from corporations and billionaires is the American way, claiming that money is, quote, free speech. Democrats disagree, but say they can't unilaterally disarm, so they join the ever-escalating arms race for fat cat money. Is politics of, by, and far moneyed interests the only way? Not for a candidate of real substance. Offering ideas that actually appeal to workaday people, getting them excited enough to become involved in the grassroots work of democracy, including putting in small bits of their own money. That's populist poppycock, squawk the political prose, impossible in the real world. Well, welcome to Bernie's world. Bernie Sanders, the unabashedly progressive senator from Vermont, is running an all-out people's campaign for the Democratic presidential nomination. He's proposing a bold agenda for change, calling it a revolution, quote, to rebuild our middle class, reclaim our democracy, and save our planet. To the shock of the political know-it-alls who had dismissed him as a non-contender, Sanders is catching on big time. With straight talk and rejection of politics as usual, he's drawing huge crowds, generating a groundswell of enthusiasm that other candidates can only dream about, and moving up in the polls as more people learn about him. Even more shocking to the cognoscenti, Bernie is raising serious money for his campaign, more than $15 million in only three months. More impressive than the amount, Sanders notes that, quote, we did it the right way. No billionaires, super PACs, or dark money. Instead, more than 99% of his funding is coming from people giving under $250. Indeed, the average donation is just $33. This is Jim Hightower saying, for information on this uncorporatized presidential campaign, go to berniesanders.com. Hightower's commentary is brought to you by the Hightower Lowdown. From Wall Street to Washington, this monthly newsletter reveals who's doing what to whom and why. Check it out, hightowerlowdown.org. Hi, this is Steve Allardort from Rancho Financial with the Mortgage Minute. This may be the perfect time to move forward with a new purchase. The feds have not yet increased short-term rates. When they do, we expect both rates and property values to increase. Today, you have an opportunity to qualify for a lower payment and more home than potentially even just a few months down the road. If you have VA eligibility, we can do up to 100% financing. We have loans with as little as 3.5% down, less than 20% down without mortgage insurance. Turned down because you can't qualify with your tax returns? We have special programs that we can use your assets to qualify you, and we have just come out with a bank statement program. If you can't qualify with your tax returns, but can show income through your bank statements, we might have a loan program just for you. There are many possible options that can make a huge difference in your monthly payments. That's why you need a loan financial planner. Give me a call, Steve Allador, at 888-563-1070. That's 888-563-1070, or go to loanfinancialplanner.com. When should I begin taking Social Security? What should I invest in today? And when should I look at making changes? What should I do with my 401k if I change jobs? Hello, I'm Mo Ansari, host of Market Wrap and president of Compaq Asset Management. These are just some of the questions we are asked on a regular basis, and the answers are different for each and every one of you. That's why at Compaq Asset Management, we take a holistic approach to wealth management which means taking the time to get to know you, your lifestyle, and your goal to better invest your money now and make a plan for your future. Call Compaq Asset Management at 800-388-9700 and make an appointment to meet with me personally for a free portfolio review and answers to your specific financial questions. That's 1-800-388-9700, 1-800-388-9700. Compaq Asset Management is a registered investment advisor. Funds custodian, Fidelity Institutional Wealth Services, member FINRA SIPC. It's time for the KCAA Community Calendar, brought to you exclusively by Learn for Life, a growing network of public charter schools. The clear mission of Learn for Life is to motivate and mentor students who have dropped out of school and provide them with the personalized education and technical training necessary to advance their lives. From the KCAA Community Calendar, I'm Mark Westwood. Everyone's talking about the third Thursdays in San Bernardino. Rediscover the city of San Bernardino third Thursday food truck fest. Switch up your lunchtime routine. Try the gourmet food trucks every third Thursday from 11.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. at the Court Street parking lot between E and D Streets in downtown San Bernardino. Enjoy delicious, tasty food from the food trucks such as the Slam and Sliders food truck, Farmer's Belly, the Bacon Mania truck, Piaggio on Wheels, or the Greasy Wiener. 
All kinds of mouth-watering delights, hot off the truck, and plenty to eat. Put an end to dull, boring fast food and truck on over to City Hall in San Bernardino for the third Thursday Food Truck Fest in downtown San Bernardino. For more info, check out Rediscover San Bernardino's Facebook page at facebook.com backslash SB Third Thursdays. That's S-B-T-H-I-R-D Thursdays. That's a look at the KCA community calendar. I'm Mark Westwood. For more local radio every day, tune into KCAA Loma Linda. Welcome back. I'm Erin Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. We are on the brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050. We had a big story in San Bernardino. Now we have a big story in Riverside. The uh, medical school dean is is has resigned. A man largely credited for establishing UC, establishing UC Riverside School of Medicine has stepped down from his post. G. Richard Olds, dean of the school, announced his resignation effective August 31st in a letter that went out to school personnel and students. Old, Olds, Olds was said to be traveling with family on Wednesday and was unavailable for comment. UCR Chancellor Kim Wilcox also said sent out a letter regarding Old's resignation. Campus officials said Wilcox was un- also unavailable for comment. Uh, people connected with the medical school said they were shocked by the announcement. It came as a huge surprise, said Neil Schiller, Senior Associate Dean of Student Affairs for the medical school. I know he's accomplished an awful lot in five and a half years. He has been inspirational. We will miss him immensely. In an interview in May, Old spoke eagerly about the future of the medical school, his plans for expanding its role in the area, and his plans to remain as dean for several years until his retirement. Olds gave uh, Olds letter gave little inkling about his reasons for leaving. He praised the school staff and recapped both the struggle to get the school accredited and the accomplishments since. Of his resignation, he wrote, it's time for me to move to my next professional challenge. Wilcox letter to the campus also praised Olds for his accomplishments. Dick Olds has been a prime force in the creation of the first new public medical school established in California in the past four decades, a letter says, I know you all share my deep gratitude to Dr. Olds. Um, you know, they originally tried to get UC Riverside originally applied for accreditation, were denied. And and Dr. Olds said, we're not quitting. Failure yeah. was not an option. And they reapplied and got it. Yeah, well, they were they were kind of in that horrible uh, time frame when the state was budget was a mess. And they didn't have money to, to, to go forward. Yes. And so he personally went out and helped to rally the troops and raise the money locally. And then, of course, things turned around for the state financially. Now the state's kicking in big money. And all of that play, paid played a big role in allowing them to get their accreditation because if you can't afford to keep the lights on, you can't get accredited. Right. And it said, although no medical school had ever reapplied and received accreditation a year after being denied, Old said he wasn't given up, giving up. An intense year of fundraising and lobbying followed in which a $100 million of local and UC money was committed to the medical school, enough for 10 years of operation at reduced capacity. The school was accredited and the doors opened in the fall of 2013. Two months before the first class entered the doors, the state approved $15 million in annual ongoing funds for the school, essentially securing its future. And so Riverside and the whole Inland Empire owes a, a debt of gratitude uh, uh, to this dean, I'm, I'm yep. to Richard Olds. And I'm, you know, this article is, is uh, written by Mark Muckenfuss, and he's in the Press Enterprise. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. shocked. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see uh, as time goes by if we get a little more detail as to why he decided to leave when he did. And hopefully they'll find someone really good to come in and uh, continue the work because it's such an important uh, institution for our area. Um, you know, we've been talking about the doctor shortage, and we need more. We need more. <laughs> we need more doctors. And uh, well, it just it just uh, not knowing anything else. It sounds to me like maybe he just got tired of it. It it, it just wore on him. Maybe I don't know. It could be inside politics. There's you know who knows what happened. Could be changes in health of himself or a family member. I mean, yeah. I, my my father ended up retiring a couple years earlier, maybe than he would have, because my mom had some health issues. And this happens, right? People people's lives change, and you have to, you know, roll with it. I have to say, you know. Uh, UC Riverside Medical School of Medicine has really focused on the community. They do a tremendous amount of outreach and partnership with local schools to bring young people into the medical school and get them, even if they don't go to UCR, don't end up going to UCR, uh, they want kids to get involved with STEM careers and be, uh, you know, be part of the medical community, whether it's, you know, an allied health career or, you know, as a physician or a nurse or something else. So, you know, it's... uh, 
interesting. We'll we'll keep we'll keep an eye on this. So, um, are you headed to Vegas anytime soon? I'm not, but uh, I know some young young people that are. How about you? Are you going to Vegas, Bill? I lived there twice. I am not up for a third time. No. <laughs> just, it's hot. I damn near died. Did you really? <laughs> Too much partying. I, yeah. You get up in the morning, you party. You go to work, you party. You get off, you party. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is this thing called life you have to live at some point. Really? Uh, not in Vegas. Apparently. God, you're a killjoy. Well, they, they had a bar right next to the radio station. I'm going... <laughs> Okay, throw out an album. Uh, let's uh, let's go next door. Bit, you know, we're gonna play Inagata De Vida. See you it's, in fifteen minutes. It's Vegas, baby. <laughs> it was good for Frank. It's good for me. <laughs> well, apparently, construction uh, could cause the uh, will cause not could will cause even more delays in the Cajon Pass starting Friday. Uh, attention, drivers to Vegas. Fill up on gas if you're using the Cajon Pass. You're in for delays starting on Friday. Uh, pavement rehabilitation on the 15 freeway through the Cajon Pass will complicate driving for about 10 weeks beginning Friday morning. Caltrans will use what it calls the crossover method, meaning one or two lanes of southbound traffic on the 15 will be moved to the northbound 15 using a quick change mobile barrier. For 10 weeks, this configuration will be in place, and we will be having the crossover period moving back and forth from one to two lanes, depending on the peak commute hour. So, yeah, that's... um, Oh, goody. Nightmare. And for the poor people who live up the hill, I mean, and have to come to work every day, my heart goes out to you. It really, really does. So, yeah. Well, I know it's time for a break. It's 631. I'm Aaron Brinker. I'm Tobin Brinker. Got Bill the Schwartz in the booth. We'll be right back here on KCAA AM 1050. KCAA Loma Linda, your CNBC news station for the Inland Empire. California headline news. Two fires on the Bay Bridge in San Francisco this week putting motorists on edge. That bridge remains open. Authorities say it's perfectly safe. Caltrans is investigating. An insanity defense in that bizarre kidnapping case in Vallejo as the FBI arrests former Marine and Harvard grad Matthew Muller in the kidnapping of Denise Huskins and her boyfriend last March. Muller's attorney says his client suffers from bipolar disorder. There was a lot of things that were going on in Mr. Muller's life that were consistent with a person that was suffering from a mental disease. Vallejo police claimed that the kidnapping was a hoax. Pressure mounting for President Obama to revoke Bill Cosby's Presidential Medal of Freedom, a nonprofit group insisting the president has several ways to get that medal back from Cosby after his sexual assault allegations. They also want the Hollywood Walk of Fame to pull Cosby's star, but the organization says that they will not do that. Geico weather warm today, little chance of rain in California. I'm John Gilliland, and this is California Headline News. Two days ago, Jeff McDonald posted the following. Just watch the sunrise from above the clouds. So stoked. Jeff got 19 likes and 7 comments. Not bad, Jeff. Geico has a comment to add that may make you even more stoked. In just 15 minutes, you could save hundreds of dollars on car insurance by switching to Geico. And if that doesn't put your head above the clouds, you'll have the extra money to scale a peak that will. Hashtag on cloud nine. Hashtag savings. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Right now, you may be thinking about your iron. You definitely unplugged it. You ironed your shirt, then pulled the plug. You're sure of it. 92% sure. Well, cut it out. Because what you should be thinking about is switching to Geico and saving hundreds of dollars on car insurance. They have 24-7 access to help answer any of your questions. Okay, now go back to thinking about the iron. Was the little red light on or off? GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com today. From the KCAA Weather Center, I'm Ron Pritchard. For this morning, we've got sunny skies and a high near 89. Tonight, mostly clear, low near 59. Sunny and a high near 91 on Thursday. Thursday night, mostly clear with a low near 61. Sunny and a high near 93 on Friday. Friday night, partly cloudy, a low near 70. Saturday, a chance of showers and thunderstorms, partly sunny and a high near 87. Saturday night, chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy, a low near 70. Sunday, a chance of showers and thunderstorms, partly sunny, a high near 92. Sunday night, a chance of showers and thunderstorms, partly cloudy skies, a low near 70. Mostly sunny. Sunny on Monday with a high near 90, partly cloudy Monday night with a low near 67. That's your weather forecast for this hour from the station that leaves no listener behind, NBC News Radio, AM 1050. When Wild Palm Springs is the one where you get big water park fun, barefoot in the sun, barefoot. 
flow right of their footin', wet and wild their footin'. Bring your friends and stay all day. Wet and Wild is your place to play barefootin'. Yeah, you gotta get barefootin' this summer at Wet and Wild. Dive into all the thrills, all the action, all the fun. Take on awesome slides and rides. <laughs> There's big fun for kids and much more. This summer, we have extended hours, dive in movies every Friday, and everyone gets free tubes. Plus, save $7 on admission when you buy online or grab discount coupons at area Jack in the Box <laughs> restaurants. For your best summer ever, it's wet and wild. Slipping, sliding, barefootin', getting so barefootin', wet and wild, barefootin'. Wet and wild. Barefootin', wet and wild, barefootin'. Wet and wild. Park open daily. It's time for some delicious food at Pizza Dilly. Pizza Dilly Pizza in Colton, home of the famous two foot pizza with 32 slices of simply the best delicious Pizza Dilly mouth watering pizza. Pizza Dilly has all kinds of lunch specials Monday through Friday starting at $3.99, all delicious. Stop by, refresh, refuel, have a cold drink, enjoy a tasty salad or a great specialty delicious sub sandwich or simply delightful Pizza Dilly wings. Pizza Dilly is also a people dilly because your friends are all already there enjoying one of Pizza Dilly's giant screens, watching one of their favorite teams, and if you love the Dodgers, you'll love Pizza Dilly, your hometown Dodger station all year round. Come on in, enjoy a great pizza, enjoy Pizza Dilly, the real Dilly deal at 194 East Valley Boulevard in Colton or call 909-370-0242. Once again, that's 909-370-0242. I'm watering my lawn. Don't you know you can't water your lawn in the middle of the afternoon? Uh-oh, you're in big trouble. Here comes the water police. Well, what do I do now? Tune into the Water Zone show on KCAA Radio Thursday nights at 6 p.m. They'll help you out. Here's a look at the KCAA community calendar. You can win tickets to the Junior University Musical Theater presentation of The Jungle Book. Just listen to KCAA all day long and get ready to win. Are you looking for adventurous entertainment for the whole family? Then join Junior University for a musical theater experience that is unmatched under the stars at Roosevelt Bowl in Paris Hill Park. This year, it's Mugli and the adventures in the heart of the jungle as Junior University presents William R. Dixon's adaptation of The Jungle Jungle Book. Show dates are July 17th through August 1st. Starting time is 8.15 p.m. General admission is just $10 for adults and children 12 years old and younger are just $5. Two parents and all their children under 18 years can purchase a family ticket at the box office for just $25 and you can save 20% on a family ticket if you print it out at home by going to junioruniversity.org. Listen to KCAA and win tickets to the Jungle Book. And that's a look at the KCAA Community Calendar. I'm Mark Westwood. Listen to KCAA Loma Linda for less confrontation and more information. Welcome back. This is Aaron Brinker. And this is Tobin Brinker. And we got Bill the Schwartz in the booth in the booth playing the brass monkey. Certainly. <laughs> Gosh. Were you a big Beastie Boys fan? Oh, uh, so so I could take them or leave them. <laughs> yeah. This morning I'll take them. It's a party band, you know. Right. So there is um, an interesting turn of, of events. A teenage girl in New Jersey is suing for the fe- suing the federal government for the right to be drafted. Kind of puts a whole other spin on the war on women, doesn't it? And this is a woman who wants to go to war. She wants the right to be drafted. That's pretty yes. serious. Well, business. and it's it's legal for women to obviously women can women can fight can enlist, and they they're doing it all the time. They, there's lots of women yeah. in the military, but she she wants the right to be drafted. Um, although uh, although I'm sorry, she was identified as E K L in the federal class action suit. The Star Ledger identifies the teen as a recent high school graduate, Elizabeth Kyle, and her complaint is fairly straightforward. Now that the military is opening up even com- to even combat roles. Uh, women to be in combat roles, it makes no sense to require males to register for the draft at 18, but not females. In fact, it's unconstitutional, she argues. Kyle filed the complaint via her mother, asserting that the Selective Service violates the civil rights of females by excluding them. Okay, so stop there. She's saying that, the, that it's a civil right, that you have a civil right to be drafted, 
and that not including women in that civil right is unconstitutional. That's a very novel claim, I think. I, I would agree. I, I mean, would agree. Typically, typically when people are making a civil rights claim, it's because they're being denied uh, uh, something of value. And um, it's interesting because I don't think most people think of being drafted as something of value. They think of that as something to, you know, that's a cost, right? That's yes. something that it could cost you your life. It, it could. Um, if the two sexes can fight and die together, they can register together. If not, then no one should have to register, the complaint states. And perhaps she, that, that's her goal. Kyle says that she tried to register online but got shut down as soon as she checked the box for female. She hopes to represent a group of women ages 18 to 25 in the suit. Any such change would require Congress to tweak the wording of the law, says a selective service spokesman. Legislation in introduced by Representative Charles Rangel earlier this year would do that, along with reinstating the draft itself. Yeah, interesting. I, 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 she uses the word right. I wish she'd use the word responsibility, that it's a civil responsibility, because we don't talk a lot about that as citizens we have responsibilities. Right. No, no, no. You, the, you know in Israel uh, that is a requirement yes. to be a citizen. You, you must serve. Yes, yeah. mandatory conscription when eight, at 18. We actually, you know, I, um, this area has hosted, when I, my high school, we hosted exchange students, um, an exchange student from uh, Israel my senior year, and he had to go home mid-year because he turned 18 and he had to go serve. Wow. Very different system. Very well, different they, they, system. they don't piss and moan about it. They just do it. They just do it. Yeah. Now, my son and I actually got into a really intense conversation. He had very intense emotions about about the draft. Um, he feels that women should be drafted. Um, if if men can go and fight, then women should go and fight. Equality is equality, and um, it was visceral for him. Uh, that it's, you know, it's not fair. Now, we typically have not done it in the United States. Traditionally, you know, you're, the men go abroad and, the, you know, to go to war and the women stay at home. Um, but, you know, keeping well, there, the home, for, home fires burning. And there are strong social reasons for that, you know. Um, I mean, lots and lots of social reasons for that. I mean, obviously women, if they do go to fight, are, are uh, subject to certain things that, that are much more horrific than men would deal with you know, um, rape and, and, and so forth. And also in terms of rebuilding a society after war, you need to have women who are of childbearing age that are around to help to rebuild the population. And if you send all your young ladies off to fight, you may not be able to rebuild your society after, after a war's over. It certainly will take so, longer if you, don't, if you have a smaller pool of women. Yeah, and so the, the, there are concerns. But, but having and, said And they all made that, great welders when men went off to exactly. fight Exactly. I mean, they were, they were playing an important role yeah. at home. But, but having said all that, I kind of like this girl's lawsuit. I like her spunk. I like that she's standing up and saying that this is something that belongs to all of us, you know, and we need to reconnect people with this but, idea of what it means to be an American. And I think this kind of service is is a part of But if of that. she wants to serve, she can serve. There's nothing preventing her from serving, you know. I mean, there's, there's nothing preventing her from serving. So what she's da- saying is that, um, you know, women need to be forced to do it. That it's a responsibility, and yes. that's why I wish she'd use that word instead of a right. I think that it's a responsibility of citizenship that, that if, if we're all in this thing together, if men are going to put their, their lives on the line, then women should as well. Aaron, who, who did you say said it was unfair or not fair? Uh, this is the, the person who's making the, the claim. Her name is uh, uh, Elizabeth Kyle. She said it's oh, not fair. Oh, okay. Well, I think she's right. Yeah. It's not. And fairness is a big, big idea that's being but, thrown around by the left these days. Here's the thing. I mean, men are, and, and I'm probably going to get myself in trouble with feminists, but men are physically stronger than women. Most men are physically stronger than most women. You know, if, if, when you start drafting women, you know, that means women of all sizes. So you could have somebody standing next to you who's 4'11", you know, 100 pounds soaking wet, um, you know, and you know, it's that, is she going to be good in combat we have the best military on the planet of course israel's is also excellent and women do fight but there's lots of logistical questions here and i suppose they'll be worked out you know and perhaps the military would have to put in guidelines for much smaller women not being on the front line because if if their chances of dying are go up because they don't have the physical strength or stamina to be able to do it um uh or they make themselves a target which is probably also the case then then it doesn't help the country move its its mean its needs forward well men do have yeah you know, greater upper body strength, Indeed. but uh, uh, women's strengths include uh, uh, greater patience. That's why they're better welders. Well, welding teacher told me that. that really? It, welding takes a lot of patience, it, and it, guys, no, no, no. Women, it's like 
do it right. Interesting. Do it right. And warfare's do it changing. Right. Warfare's changing too. I mean, you know, it's not so much the the blunt troops on the ground as it is these. You know, you can have someone sitting at a, a computer terminal. You know, flat firing off drones, and you know, I mean, it, the, the well, way we true. the way we fight is changing. So I think there's plenty of roles for for women, regardless of. Well, I do too. I think there are roles for women in the military. What we're talking about, and I, you know, that women are in the military and they have been for a long time. That's not my question. It's not thing, something I have a, an issue with. But when you start drafting women um, into into a combat situation, because why would you have the draft if it if it weren't for a combat situation? Um, I don't know that you do your military any good. And I don't think they have the infrastructure now to differentiate you know the, the physical needs of a woman versus the physical needs of a man or physical strengths of a woman versus the physical strengths of a man on a mass scale yeah but i got to give this girl credit i mean 17 years old and she's making a, a i think a, a good argument and it's something like you said that i think a lot of people will resonate with people this idea of fairness um you know but there's a lot of logistical questions that it raise i'm i'll be interested to see what a court says how, how will the courts really look at this? Right. You know, right. will they say, well, this is a non-issue because you can just sign up if you want to. You don't need to be drafted. Or will they actually say, no, you know what? You're right. This is constitutional that we all have responsibilities, male and female. Yep. And so it applies equally to everybody. Well, now they have the first the first batch of women have tried out for the for the Army Rangers. So, you know, perhaps my views are old fashioned. I don't know. But it, it makes me nervous. Yeah. So, well, it's time for a break. I'm Aaron Brinker. I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are we have Bill the Schwartz in the booth. We are on the brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050. And we'll be right back. You're listening to KCAA, your good neighbor along the way. It's time for the KCAA Community Calendar, brought to you exclusively by Learn for Life, a growing network of public charter schools. The clear mission of Learn for Life is to motivate and mentor students who have dropped out of school and provide them with the personalized education and technical training necessary to advance their lives. Here's a look at the KCAA community calendar. I'm Successful Brim. Are you looking for a career and not just a job? Well, you're in luck. TRL Systems is having a career fair on Thursday, July 16th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. The career fair will be held at TRL Corporate Office located at 9531 Millican Avenue in Rancho Cucamonga. So be sure to bring your resume. They are looking for experienced and entry-level technicians, IT managers, engineers, foremen, and service technicians. A complete listing of job opportunities is available at www.trlsystems.com. Again, at www.trlsystems.com. Also, there will be a chance for same-day interviews and hiring. However, space is limited. Be sure to RSVP by emailing careers at trlsystems.com to guarantee FaceTime with your next potential manager. For more information, log on to www www.trlssystems.com or call toll-free at 800-266-1392. Again, www.trlsystems.com or call toll-free at 800-266-1392. So come out Thursday, July 16th and get your career started. TRL Systems, when reliability counts. That's a look at the community calendar on KCAA 1050 AM. The KCAA Community Calendar is presented exclusively by Learn for Life, a growing network of public charter schools where students can complete their education on a part-time basis. To find a resource center nearest you, call 1-877-360-LEARN or visit Learn for Life online at learn4life.org. An extra, extra large man finds a t-shirt. It's the Onion Radio News. This is Doyle Redland reporting. Enormous fat man Ted Avers has until recently had a difficult time finding shirts that fit his extra, extra large frame. Avers, who is in what doctors call the huge weight category, is very pleased with the results of shopping at Guy Jumbo's clothing store on the west side of town. My brother, he's lucky. He's only extra large, so he can shop anywhere. Me? I'm really fat. Avers was so happy with his purchase that he jumped for joy until a massive connective tissue failure resulted in a fat spill that closed the store. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. Friday night, July 24th at Ween's Family Cellars Winery in Temecula. A concert under the stars featuring Berlin. Berlin with lead singer Terry Nunn and their huge hits, Sex. And riding on the metro. Riding on the metro. 
Opening the show, Temecula's very own, the 4019s. The entire show is hosted by me, the poor man. Berlin, the 4019s, and dinner, Friday night, July 24th, at Ween's Family Cellars Winery in Temecula. Get your tickets now. Go to goldencrownproductions.com. Call 951-658-2411 for more information. Concert in support of Hospice of the Valley. So we'll see you Friday night, July 24th, Ween's Family Cellars Winery in Temecula, Berlin, 4019s, hosted by me, the poor man. See you there. Like to spend a few days in another world? Then write this down. Golden Bear Cottages, Big Bear Lake. Now, listen, this is not some corporate-owned operation. It's family-owned and operated by some real nice people. Unique? Oh, you bet. Golden Bear Cottages features 28 one-of-a-kind cabins on a five-acre historic site. Great for families, couples, and groups. And cabins are available with one to seven bedrooms. Golden Bear Cottages is just a stone throw from Big Bear Lake and super close to three great ski areas. Now, I could go on all day about Golden Bear Cottages in Big Bear, but to see everything, just go to goldenbear.net. Again, goldenbear.net. Golden Bear Cottages in Big Bear. Clean, comfortable, and affordable. Check them out. Goldenbear.net. Psst. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Do you know where you are? Well, you've done it now. You're listening to KCAA Loma Linda, your CNBC news station. So expect the unexpected. Welcome back. I'm Aaron Brinker. I'm Tobin Brinker. We have Bill the Schwartz in the booth. Right on. Right on. So yesterday was a big day. And whether you thought it was a big great day or a big disappointment day, you know, well, Tobin, why don't you tell the story? Okay, so uh, Amazon has come up with this thing they called Prime Day. Amazon Prime Day. And it's meant to be this super sale online, right? And they they hyped it and sold it as bigger than Black Friday, you know, which is the big sales day of the year for back to school and all that after thing not back to school but after it's christmas, christmas. it's for like the after, really after, kicks off the christmas buying season yeah yeah after thanksgiving so but they said this was going to be even bigger than that and so people were watching to see what they did and um it was kind of a fizzle for some folks uh so let me let me give you this, this is from yahoo finance um Doorbuster or tag sale? That's the question that many Amazon customers seem to be asking as they browse the retail site during a shopping extravaganza that Amazon has hyped as bigger than Black Friday. Prime Day, as Amazon calls it, is supposed to be a midsummer opportunity to get killer prices on some of the year's hottest products. But many shoppers are logging on to find underwhelming deals on oddball offerings such as beer coolies, <laughs> nose vents, shoehorns, and cat training aids. So they promised bigger and better, but it wasn't even a blue light special. No. Oh, man. So, uh, given Amazon's heft, some retail analysts have suspected or speculated that the online deal fest could reshape the whole retail landscape. Uh, instead, Prime Day seems to be shaping up as a flop as social media posts have kind of uh, hammered them. And I'll just give you a, a sampling of some social media posts. Here's one from a guy named Dan Dolly. He says, this Amazon sale is a joke. The sale of Thomas the Train and Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Woohoo! Amazon Prime. Thanks, but no thanks. Um, here's one from Kim Kreiss. Amazon Prime Day is like shopping a garage sale. You go in with high expectations and walk away with more junk. And then one more uh, social media one. This is from a guy named Joey Santos. Super disappointed in Amazon Prime Day. Is it possible that Walmart is having better sales on their website than Amazon? I think so. So here's what Yahoo Finance did. They actually did a, com- a, a little comparison here between Walmart and Amazon. Um, Walmart... Uh, is their biggest competitor to Amazon for the online deals. And they also promised to match uh, Amazon's rollback, so with, with specials of their own. So uh, Yahoo Finance decided to quickly rank each ret- retailer in four categories to determine who wins the first annual Prime Day Slugfest. And in their estimation, Walmart. Walmart walloped 
Amazon by a score of 14 to 8, with 20 being the highest possible score. And then they outline their grading system here and talk about some of the stuff. And it's interesting, as I was reading the article and getting into the details, Walmart focused on, like, everyday items that people need, right? Like, that, that was what they really focused on, giving you good deals on. So if you were looking to buy diapers for your baby or, you know, stuff like that, uh, uh, baby strollers or things, things that people would need, you know, sort of in a regular context, that's where they had their deals. And, and Amazon had some of that, but as, as you saw from the social media comments, Amazon also had some really weird stuff, you know? Um, so they really weren't very relevant to what folks were looking for. Um, now, uh, having said that, Amazon um, had some, some big deals that uh, really were sort of their big sell sellers. So like they had a 3D TV that they were selling for $999, and they sold out on them. 1,200 of them went like that, you know? And so they had some big ones that, and, and I'm sure they boosted and had a really strong day. In fact, they're saying they had a bigger day than Black Friday. Well, they... they Maybe have their quirks right now at the beginning, but uh, you look at Walmart's strategy. Um, yeah, they advertise low uh, low prices, but that's on their low end stuff that they advertise. And then you try and step up a grade to something, and it's actually yeah. more expensive than the other stores. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they have to they have to make up for that loss later, don't they? So yeah, I actually think that that um, you know one of the biggest challenges is expectations. So people are thinking, yeah, I'm going to get a, a you know a TV for five bucks. Of course, I'm exaggerating at the moment, but I think that a lot of the people who were posting on social media maybe they had unrealistic expectations. Um, it sounds to me like. Uh, that the day was a success, um, and I, you know, I say this because, you know, they did they did sell the 50 inch Samsung 3D TV for a thousand bucks and sold out really fast. They had a Kate Spade purse that sold out in less than a minute. A set of red, rubber band storage containers uh, sold uh, for 14.99. They sold 28 thousand of them. So I think that that as they continue, I mean, Amazon is a very innovative company, yes, they are. and as they continue with this Prime Day th um, event. Uh, so maybe next year it will just it will continue to get better. So, so actually, one of the biggest complaints was about how Amazon listed their sales items because instead of just having them all right there from the beginning of the day and you could just go and browse for the things you wanted, they had these lightning deals that would sort of pop up randomly throughout the day, and so you had to wait and kind of sit around and hoping that you catch the deal on the particular item you're looking for. Well, they want you to stay on the site. Yeah. And, I mean, and that's the strategy, right? Because they figure you're going to spend more money if you stay on the site. Yeah. Well, and I'm certain that's the strategy. And maybe it worked out for them. Maybe they made a lot of money. But also, it seems that it frustrated a lot of users who basically felt like they were held hostage sitting around waiting to find out. Whereas the Walmart site was just more upfront with it and said, here's what we've got, you know, and so on. And so it's going to be very interesting to see which strategy works better and, and what's the sweet spot, right? Well, I, I can tell you I've been burned with uh, online rebates. So I, I will say from a brick and mortar, there is a lot of power in having a paper receipt. Yeah. There really is. Yeah. I, I have to, I'm, see, I'm an online shopper. I can't stand going to the store. Tobin will tell you. Yeah. I'm just, I don't, they're crowded. They're, you know, people are, leave their junk in the, in the stores. And I, and I, I don't go to Walmart generally ever because, it, you know, it's, it's not necessarily the store per se. It's, it's. You it's know. the human parade. Oh, it is! It is the P O W, the people of Walmart. No, <laughs> and and I don't want that to sound snobby or anything, but it. I just I'm, Walmart's not my favorite place. I do shop. We are Amazon Prime members. I do yeah. shop at Amazon. I like Amazon. You know, and I think it's just different strokes for different folks. The online thing is interesting because there's a, a real connection between online and in store. And our son actually just had a great deal where uh, he. Graduated from college, he needed to buy nice dress clothes. Because he's got for a his, job, he's got job. a yeah. And they had a one day online sale for Men's Warehouse, fifty percent off on everything online for that one day. He went and bought all of his clothes, and then he got to go into the local Men's Warehouse, where he then picked up the clothes, tried it on, and if they didn't give him the right size, he could then exchange it for the right size, because that's always a concern with shopping online for clothes, right? Right. Plus, uh, that you know, if he needed any tailoring done, all that, all that stuff could be done right there in the store. And, and so you have that nice interaction between the online and the in the store. And, and I like that. I think that's a good model. Uh, yeah, I do. Well, and but, you know, if you're looking for, you know, spatulas or yeah. you're looking for a book, uh, you don't need, there's nothing to try on. It's true. You know, especially if the return policy is easy. Yeah. I mean, the kids have even, they uh, they rent their textbooks on Amazon. I mean, it's 
you know, and Amazon's an innovative company. They really are. I, I'm a fan, if you can't tell. She's a fan. <laughs> I'm a fan. So we're completely out of time. I'm Aaron Brinker. I'm Tobin Brinker. We have Bill the Schwartz in the booth. It's been so much fun hanging out with you today here on KCAA AM 1050. Have a productive Thursday. We'll be back tomorrow. This is KCAA Loma Linda, the station that leaves no listener behind. CNBC News is next, a courtesy of BuySellMakeOffer.com, where you can post a video about items you have for sale. Sign up now. It's free. I'm Chris Maurer, CNBC Business Radio. The markets are poised to bounce back from last session's small losses on some better-than-expected earnings results from Intel, Netflix, Philip Morris, Domino's, and Citigroup. Citi not only topped analyst expectations, but posted its highest quarterly profit in eight years. That's as the bank's restructuring efforts and cost cuts paid off. Traders are also happy about a crucial yes vote from Greece's parliament. It gave the thumbs up to legislation which would secure a bailout, saving the country from financial ruin and keeping it a part of the eurozone. And more good news from the job sector. First-time unemployment claims fell last week by 15,000 to 281,000. This is the first time in three weeks the numbers have dropped. eBay has agreed to sell its enterprise business unit for $925 million. The buyer is a consortium led by Permira and Sterling Partners. A promise was made, a promise that hit the beaches of Normandy, a vow that captured Iwo Jima, a contract that weathered Tet, a pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq, an IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earned. For help, visit DAV.org. I had Belvita breakfast biscuits this morning. Then what did I do? Made my bed, fed my fish, got dressed, cleaned the dish, remembered to floss, but still didn't do it. Ran a lap on the track, dropped my phone, didn't crack, got in before the boss, made sure that he knew it. Oh, hey, you just getting here? Crunchy Belvita breakfast biscuits are made with delicious ingredients and carefully baked to release steady energy all morning long. Share your morning win. Belvita. Morning win. KCAA, where every day is a great day. KCAA, Loma Linda. Good morning, it's 7.02. I'm Bill Schwartz with your traffic and weather. Temps in the 80s and 90s in the IE today, L.A. and Orange County. Uh, once the fog clears out, they're going to be in the low 80s. Beaches in the 70s. Uh, the mountains are going to be sunny with temps in the mid-70s. Currently 65 degrees. Checking out your traffic. Looks like Chino has stop-and-go traffic that's on the 60 westbound between Central and the 57 Orange Freeway. In Riverside, we've got stop-and-go traffic on the 91 between Magnolia Avenue, that's westbound and Green River Road. Also, Lake Elsinore with stop-and-go traffic. I-15 northbound between Indian Truck and Cajalco Road. This traffic and weather has been brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. If you're dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for advice and support. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Consider this your invitation to sell. At buysellmakeoffer.com, you can sell as much as you want for the next 60 days without paying any fees whatsoever. Sound incredible? It is, and it's true. Buysellmakeoffer.com is the new exciting way to sell your stuff online. Make extra money right now. Sell your old car, furniture, video games, household items, clothes, even your home. Sell anything that's legal. Load up your stuff to sell right now at buysellmakeoffer.com. This is your official invitation to get on board to sell your stuff right now free for the next 60 days and once you see how easy it is you'll want to sign up for more because there are no item fees that's right take this opportunity to move items from the other guys and sell it for free you might even win a samsung tablet amazon gift cards and other cool prizes buy sell make is the future of online selling you can use skype to talk